Hi guys, so I wanted to do a video on my psychiatry rotation and I'm going to just talk to you guys about things I was able to do this rotation as well as if it was my favorite, if I had to rate it, things like that. So it's gonna be pretty long, so grab a snack if you want, but let's get started. So initially before I went into psychiatry, I really didn't think that I would like it at all. I was never interested when I was taking the courses in school and just knowing that all of these disorders were out there i still didn't really have an interest in psychiatry but i feel like this rotation has given me a really good insight as to what psychiatry pertains to and before i was ever in the rotation i always thought that like these patients were running loose around the floor, screaming off the top of their head, banging their heads on the wall, things like that. And I was really, really scared going into this rotation because I've heard horror stories from my other um, classmates. But um, I will say that none of that had happened. And I was really surprised because these patients were very calm mostly because they were medicated sometimes there would be codes but for the most part i didn't witness anything super violent i'm just gonna quickly go over the week setups that i had so for my first week i was in admissions and evaluations this is basically where the ems will take the patient and um the pa or the doctor there will talk to the patient as well as the social worker and we will come up with a plan where they're gonna go and then once there's availability in the inpatient units the patient will go upstairs my second and third week there i was in inpatient adult psychiatry and here you really just see patients from 18 and above male and female gender there's no discrepancy there my fourth week i was in partial which is a program that basically takes patients who are in child adolescent psychiatry inpatient and now they're trying to transition back to going back to school back to home and the partial program is exactly what it sounds like you're partially at home and partially in the hospital so during the day you come to the hospital you do school work you do therapy you talk to other classmates things like that at the end of the day your parents come and pick you up and you go home you sleep your parents get to monitor you if they have any questions they can call the doctor and then my last two weeks there for my fifth and sixth week i was in inpatient again but now i was there for adolescent and child psychiatry and this i think was ranging from 10 to about 17 years old so they are very young and it was crazy to see just how many medications some of these kids were on so i would say that my favorite section of my, this rotation was definitely inpatient whether that be adult or adolescent just because i was able to see the patients every day and it gave me a bit of continuity with the patient because i would be able to write their notes as well and it really helped me to learn their case and really understand them as a person whereas in partial when i only see them once a week it's very hard to build that report as a provider who was only there for one week. So I really only saw those patients once. And sometimes I felt like the patients were withholding information or they just weren't super open to indulging on everything about them, which I completely understand because if you told me that I was gonna go to my doctor and then they were gonna have a student in the room that I've never met before, I don't know how open I would be about asking certain questions. In this rotation, I was actually able to do a lot. Um, I was able to write notes in the EMR, which I've never gotten a chance to do before. So in emergency and ob guide, I was never able to write notes but i could see the notes see the lab values the orders as well as imaging things like that also this hospital used a super super old emr system so i had to get training for that beforehand and if i did not i literally would be so lost navigating that thing because i don't know about you guys but if you were born before the 2000s um if you remember what windows looked like that's exactly what the emr system looked like so it was just crazy to me that that program was still running but it was yep so i was able to write the hpi as well as the 
assessment and plan for the patients and then I would save them and the attending physician would either sign my note, make some edits, and then sign it or they would just leave it in my name which I wasn't really sure how that happened but I think that day the doctor didn't see the patient and so they just left my note there. As for hours on this rotation, I was there five days a week and I went in around 8.39 and then was going home around 3 or 4 o'clock. Some of my most used resources during this rotation, I never got myself the DSM-5, but if you're super interested in psych, I would definitely say either find it online or buy one. I know they're like super huge. I've seen them before in the doctor's offices, but if you're super into psych, definitely get that. I know Tiffany has like a pocket size version. I think that's what she told me. And I think that's super cool because I know she's interested in psychology and psychiatry. So yeah, it's definitely affordable if you, if you really look out. That I would say, would be super useful if I had one. I didn't, so I relied on my notes from last year when I took the psychology courses. One of the PAs that I worked with my first week there, she printed out a up-to-date table of all the first and second generation antipsychotics, and then she wrote the name brands, all of them, um, since the generic brands were already there. And then she highlighted like the ones that were most used and most common and she told me to know them based on whether they were most sedating like which one caused the most qt prolongation although it's a class effect also like which one causes the most weight gain things like that because essentially the antipsychotics are the same they all do the same thing but they can work differently for different patients and so one patient can take clozapine and it could be terrible for them but then another patient can take it and be super normal and not have any side effects and so it was just a matter of recognizing the names and also their side effects and their mechanism of actions i really appreciated Ross review this time around because they have like little picture things that come up after you answer the questions and me being a visual learner it really helped me because i was able to like remember the question and also what i read based on the picture that i saw i always do this where i talk about a few of the most memorable things that i've seen um, the first being bipolar disorder because this was the very first patient that I ever saw and I've never seen anyone with bipolar disorder before and they were going through their acute manic phase. So to see someone just be so hyperactive and also tell me their delusions and hallucinations was so crazy because the patient made it sound so persuadable. It just seems so real and I think that was just one of the things that stood out to me because I've never seen that before. Another thing was seeing a patient with OCD and with a fear of going outside, finally go home. It really warmed my heart to see this patient make so much progress to the point that they were able to go home and be discharged because I remember they were there for quite a while. It was just nice feeling like I helped make a difference, although the doctor was the one that did most of the work. And then the last thing that was most memorable was seeing a child with borderline personality disorder. I always just thought that the personality disorders were something probably everyone had because some of these characteristics are super common in just the everyday person, I think. Like in narcissistic personality disorder, these people are full themselves you see that in a lot of people there's also people who are avoidant where they just tend to not want to engage in certain things and you know like that's everyone does that so i just always thought that they were super mild this patient that i saw was textbook personality disorder and it was so crazy because the patient had such a big effect on the family and i think it's mostly because the patient was a child and it was just a lot for me to see because I never knew that that disorder can go to this extent and how much an effect it would have on the family. I know it sounds very naive of me, but 
it was just so shocking to see in person so as for something that i would brush up on before i start my psychiatry rotation it would be my mental status exam because this is essentially your physical exam as a provider and it's all verbal so it's things that you have to ask to elicit information from your patient and there's actually a mnemonic to help you remember this and it's called aseptic so a stands for appearance which is how the patient looks and their behavior as well. So are they lying down? Are they sitting and talking to you? How do they look? Is their grooming okay? Are they like wearing appropriate clothes in front of you? And then you have S, which stands for speech. So is their speech fast paced? Is it pressured? How is their rate, fluency, tone, latency, things like that. Some patients will be super quiet and they just like won't talk that loud and they'll mumble and then you have patients that are just like super hyper and like will talk really really fast and say like oh my gosh i really love today today's weather is so great i love this i love that um that was just a lot for me oh my gosh there are some patients that will just take a really long time to answer you so if you ask them a question they'll kind of stare into space and then slowly answer you so Everything is so different and I think it's really memorable when you see them in person because it will really stick in your mind at that point. E, which stands for emotion. So this is when you would ask the patient about their mood and their affect. So mood is how the patient feels. So you can ask me how I feel today and I can tell you that I'm depressed or I'm sad. And then affect is how the patient seems to you. So if they're depressed you would most likely think that they're like slumped in their chair like looking at something else not really paying attention to you um, and if a patient is inappropriately smiling or making jokes and things like that but they're telling you that they're depressed then their mood and their affect are incongruent and they don't really match in a way so that's also something you want to look for p stands for perception so perception is are they having delusions? Are they having hallucinations, illusions? Um, and you wanna figure out if they're having delusions, are they grandiose? There's also persecutory, where they think that someone is out to get them. So there's a ton of different delusions that these patients can have. And I think super important to know your differences between them and also to recognize that they have any of them. T, that stands for thought process. So if they are answering you, are they answering it right away? Then that would be linear. If they are answering it in a way that they're dancing around the answer and they never get to the answer, then that's tangential. And if they dance around the answer, but eventually get back to it, that's circumstantial. So there's different ones. I know there's like echolalia, the others are escaping me right now, but there are a ton of different ones. Um, and then I stands for insight. So insight meaning, do they know that they have a disorder or a disease? Do they know what's wrong with them? Do they know why they're in the hospital? <coughs> oh my God, I've been talking for too long. And then you also want to assess their judgment, which is do they know, are they having good judgment? So are they able to make a good choice for themselves? And one of the basic questions that I think we were taught to ask is if you smell smoke in a movie theater, what would you do? And obviously the answer for someone who has good judgment would be to tell a staff member, to tell someone, to call 911, things like that, right? I also learned that in a hospital setting, you can see if someone has good judgment based on whether or not they are willing to be compliant with their medication, knowing that they have a disorder that needs meds so if someone is not taking their medication then you can say that they have poor judgment and if they are taking it you can say that they have good judgment and then lastly there's uh c which stands for cognition so this is when you're assessing if they're a and o times three if they have good concentration good memory remote learning so if they're able to remember things um like three words that you've told them and then also you want to do your serial sevens 
Um, I think that's part of concentration and spelling world backwards. Super important to know your mental statics exam because like I said, that is your physical exam in psychiatry and you need to know it like the back of your hand. All right, so my rating for this rotation, I think I'm gonna give it a five out of five because it literally super exceeded my expectations. I, I told you in the beginning, like I never thought I would like psych and I, I don't love it, but I now see the true nature of psychiatry. And I also just think that it's a possibility that I can go into it. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't wipe it off the table, which is a shocker because I never really liked psychiatry to begin with. And I also think that I was given a lot of autonomy as a student because I was able to write notes and see the patients on my own. Um, I was able to really just, you know, be myself around the patient and yeah, just I really like the fact that I was able to do that. That wraps up this end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. My next rotation is going to be something very exciting if you already have seen my vlog. I don't know if I've said it in the vlog, but I'm really excited for that one. And I think I'm going to vlog it as much as I can. Stay tuned for those videos. But I think that's going to be it for this one. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!